Welcome back to another Quantum X series where we're going to try and make the case that doesn't exist. Quantum X. So uh, quite famously, we posted some renders of a whole loop, the, the whole system of EK parts without a case, without a motherboard, without any hardware as, a, as an ad campaign. And lots of people commented what case did you use for the picture? Uh, I guess it's a standard internet comment, uh, but uh, it got us thinking like, could we make that case? You know, can the case that doesn't exist, exist? So with like a month and a half to CES, let's make it exist. The objectives here is just to make a case that doesn't exist. If you can see the case, we missed the point. Ideally, all of the parts are gonna be suspended in roughly the same layout as, uh, as an 011 DXL, so three 420 radiators, and there's gonna be no case, simple. I guess our target overall is, of course, to produce the case and uh, to make it as light both visually and physically as it can be. So uh, we'll use you know, very uh, strong materials that we can make it really fine uh, and as much as possible hide all of the structure behind the parts that are already there without uh, kind of you know, deliberately blocking stuff. So everything looks very controlled and suspended uh, and from the front angle at least, none of the case is visible. So the big challenge here is, of course, to hide the case, but also to have it still rigid enough to support the hardware that we can assemble it into the build and still pick it up, move it, ship it. You know, it can't be so fragile that you, you couldn't even move the build around. Uh, and ideally it would be able to withstand, uh, of course, with, with appropriate packaging, but it would be able to withstand getting shipped, getting unboxed, uh, getting moved around. I um, think that's going to be the hard part. Hiding it, I already have good ideas how to camouflage it, where to put the structure, um, but making it strong enough that, it, that it's rigid and stuff doesn't uh, wobble or flex, that's a little more of a challenge. Um, since we're quite pushed for time, I don't want to make any new parts that aren't the case itself. So uh, we'll be using standard uh, quantum surface radiators, uh, standard blocks, simple, whatever hardware we can find around. Uh, hopefully, you know, with Metric 7, we can pick a motherboard that has a monoblock, uh, any of our uh, graphics cards that support one of our GPU blocks, and just put it otherwise all together with normal parts. We may make a slightly different distribution plate for it. Uh, so really just limit things to the distro in the case. It shouldn't be important what the other hardware is. I, I'm very confident that we can make the case that it, it will happen and will complete the project if uh, success is Delivering it to CES, that's a different story. Uh, but uh, I know I know we can uh, design it and piece everything together and uh, I'm certain we'll arrive at a case. How great it will be on the first attempt, if it will be just quite strong enough or uh, if it could have been thinner somewhere, if it could have appeared even lighter, uh, that remains to be judged. It is gonna be some quite delicate engineering compared with any case that we've had before. Okay, since all of this needs to get wrapped up before all of the machinists go on holiday for Christmas, let's get to the CAD and get this ordered. Quantum X. So we've already started the CAD for the case and it begun with the layout of the hardware. Since we don't want the case to actually exist, uh, it, it made sense that first we lay out the radiators, the fans, motherboard graphics card as we would want them to be. It's pretty much true to the render, to the advert, with exception of the GPU is vertical. I always think verticals are much nicer to show the um, 
show the GPU block and uh, it also adaptable to different sizes of GPU. A bit easier, you don't put a hugely wide GPU in and make the case wide. As well as that, then it had to include hardware. So the motherboard PCB is seen here and also the power supply. The best place I could think to hide an ATX power supply was right in the middle of the motherboard at the back. And that way from, from a, a rear quarter view, uh, it's concealed by the board and from a, a front quarter view, it's also not too visible. Maybe through the distro plate, you'll see it when you look through, but it will mostly be as hidden as it could be uh, tucked in at the back. So around that, I started putting in pieces of, uh, solid pieces of case, so solid pieces of what I assume will be aluminium uh, as complete plates. Not saying anything will be as thick and as chunky and as wide and, and as solid as it appears now. Uh, just that's where it could be. That's the space it could occupy. So if it, if it was vertical there, the top could easily be hidden with the uh, eight pin PCIe cable. And that's, that's all there is to that structure. Um, obviously, if, if the motherboard tray was just screwed directly on the edge of it, it would have a tendency to, to wobble around it and maybe twist around it. Uh, so I also intend to use the power supply bracket as a horizontal part just to reinforce the motherboard tray uh, and to screw all three things together. Then the graphics card, I hope, can be suspended from underneath. So from, from up behind it, it can be cradled uh, and you would be able to see like to the rear side it would look very thin and to the front side you also wouldn't have a continuous edge going back. And one neat idea just that, that came to me from that was we could make a GPU bracket, so the, the vertical bracket that can be screwed onto the upright member of the case in different places. So if you wanted to put a wider GPU in you could screw it down in the lower position. If it was the narrowest GPU you could slide that bracket up and screw it somewhere else. The radiator brackets, for now, they're complete plates, but I intend to cut off the entire front half. So from the front view, uh, nothing would be visible holding the radiators. Uh, you know, when you see it in perspective and the, the rear side of the bracket hidden by the radiator, that they would be completely hidden. Uh, the rear radiator, uh, so that it's both suspended from behind and from the front, I would put the structure and its mounting in between the fans and the radiator. That way it's not visible from any side. And the last component to the structure would be the front plate. So this front plate can be extremely thin and uh, would mount to the distribution plate. So the plexi block of the distribution plate can give it strength. Uh, if it's screwed in multiple places at the top and bottom, it's really just gonna be holding things together during assembly and it will include the feet, but it won't actually take any uh, stress. It won't be bent. It will be kind of reinforced by the distro. And that way it can be as, as thin and, and precise as possible. So uh, after I'd like made all those pieces, put them in, then I started to think about, okay, how does it look when the hardware is gone? So when the hardware is hidden, uh, what's left behind? So now you start to see the structure of the case and I identified that the, the back half and the front half, both rigid in their own right, may want to move relative to each other. So they, they may try and uh, parallelogram and twist forward and back or twist relation to each other. So I think I will try to add one brace, uh, one plate to connect them rigidly behind the front radiator. And this may also serve as some kind of handle to pick up the case. But at the moment, that's all there is to it. So when the distro is hidden as well, uh, it's really a very thin case. And like all, all of these brackets, all of these plates, I'll put massive holes in them, cut them out, slim them down, and 
hopefully it will all start to disappear. So that's it for now. Um, I just have to thin down all of these parts, uh, take, take the blank shapes and give them a material, give them uh, a shape and a form and take as much away from it as I can while still leaving behind the structure of a case. Hello and welcome back to the second Quantum X episode of The Chassis That Doesn't Exist. Except now, it very much does exist. And this is the most that will be seen of it ever, probably, because as soon as it starts getting assembled, not only will it hide itself, but the hardware going on it, motherboard radiators, the distro plates, when everything comes together, pretty much all of the aluminium work will be hidden, at least from the front angles. So, uh, drink it in. We have the black version and the silver version. I think for the build, I'm going to be going with the black version because the silver version, you know, it really shows the detail of the case. So it's, it's best to see that uh, on its own, you know, standing on its own. Uh, we also have a new, very special distro plate for it. Some other little items to come uh, throughout the course of this build. So there's going to be a lot of new, fresh EK hardware for 2024. And Pretty much all of them are featuring in this build. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the parts. I'll show you the silver so you can see all of the detail. The case is pretty much constructed of these two vertical elements. So this is the rear one and that is the front one. They are very tall and probably one of the longer aluminium pieces that we've made. Uh, they have a number of mounting points for various panels of the case and everything basically gets hung or suspended off these parts. The feet are included in the base and that makes them, if you can imagine, quite a big square of aluminium even though only a, a couple hundred grams is left behind. Uh, this extra plate is behind the top radiators and it links the front to the rear so the case doesn't try and uh, wobble too much. It just braces it all and it's not a super uh, structural member but it just holds everything square. And it's exceptionally useful when you're building the case because without that, when you take the radiators off the whole case, the front would fall off the back. Uh, next, we have a radiator mount. This is for the side radiator. It's extremely thin, so it certainly won't impede any airflow. This little guy, this is really quite fun. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts in the build because it had so many purposes. So it sits and holds the power supply behind the motherboard. So power supply mounts on there like usual. Uh, it braces the uh, vertical at the back of the case and holds it square to the case. And it also screws to the motherboard tray. So the motherboard tray is on the front. And when those three panels are locked together, uh, this one holds it all square. And at the same time, it's not bigger than the size of the power supply. It's really neat. And the uh, holes tapped in the side of it fit into the whole pattern of the power supply. So I like that piece. Uh, this little guy, this is a brace for the side radiator. It has three tapped holes and it was probably very fun to make. Um, and yeah, this just keeps that side radiator square so it doesn't wobble. And then we have two more rather peculiar parts. So while they're essentially like one long stick with an end on, these are actually the top and bottom radiator brackets. So the reason that I only put one side in it is so when this is mounted and the radiator sat on top of it, 
you can't see the edge. So it will give the illusion that the radiator is just floating and it's supported on the back edge and at one point on the front, as well as from its ports. So the radiator effectively becomes the main structural element of this and it just extends it a little bit so it can be screwed to the case. And it's unbelievably light. Uh, next up, we have the motherboard tray. You can see the nine uh, ATX mounting points and there are four more mounting points where it gets screwed to the vertical at the back and the PSU bracket, so it all gets braced nicely. Um, this point is effectively hanging, which is why I put this very big diagonal structure in to hold the corner of the motherboard. And other than that, it's really just as, as cut away and extreme as possible. So one other thing to note is I was also thinking this would be a really nice case for the uh, ATX APE standard with the reverse connectors. So between all the mounting holes on every side where connectors might be if they're on the back of, of motherboards in the future, uh, it's all cleared out and hollowed out. So you could not only have a case that doesn't exist, but cables that doesn't exist at the same time. Hopefully that does happen. This peculiar little brace is to hold the graphics card just at the top. So uh, the IO brackets just screwed through here and that's everything that does. And by far the most intricate piece, and I imagine the most difficult, I've not thought too hard about the tooling that was needed to make all these parts, but I'm sure it was uh, a very complicated one. This is the vertical GPU bracket. So it screws to the case by these holes. You can see there's two sets of holes and uh, the PCIe riser bracket screws in here. That little brace we just looked at screws perpendicular on there and that's everything you need. Uniquely, um, as well as being made entirely in, in one solid piece and that couldn't have been fun to drill and tap these holes uh, alongside this little guy that's left behind. Uh, uniquely, the multiple holes fit in multiple holes on the rear vertical, so you can move where the GPU is. In other Matrix 7 versions of distro plates and cases, because we were working with a case that's already built, we put like a series of holes in the distro plate for different size graphics cards. But in this build, to accommodate different size graphics cards, you'll just move the whole thing up and down. And that means the two tubes out to the front will always be on exactly the same level. Uh, and then there's just two ports in the distro plate. So it made everything really quite neat. And there's no uh, extra visible holes on the distro plate at all. Here, the first little sneaky preview of one of our upcoming products in 2024. This is very similar, but critically different to the uh, convection D5 cover that we already have, because this one has space for an LED, and the top plate, which covers it, has uh, screws inside, this side has magnets inside, so they just clip together. You won't have to thread the cables of the pump through the side anymore, you can just put this on the pump, put all the cables out, deal with those later, uh, they run under this little clip, so you can clamp them, and then the magnet covers it up. And if you you know, you want the cables to go this way, you can still put the badge on in the correct orientation, and this halo around the badge all lights up, as well as the badge itself. So that's a nice one. And in this build, I'm gonna be using two of them, because this is actually our first distro plate that has dual pumps, well, no, no, that's not strictly true. The 1000D had dual pumps in series, but this has dual loops as well. So there's one D5 for the CPU loop at the top, and that's connected to just the top radiator. And there's one D5 for the GPU loop at the bottom, which connects the lower radiator and the side radiator. So this is a huge distro plate. It's also Probably the biggest piece of plexi that we've had since the uh, Linus Tech Tips desk. 
they were, they were huge, but this one's still much bigger than any production distro plate. It's a lot bigger than that in the uh, Evo XL. And that gave enough space to spread it out and make dual loops on a single plane. So I think if the case was any smaller than this, uh, dual loop distro plate would need an extra layer so that the coolant can cross over. But in this, the CPU loop, we managed to nest it all in one little square here. And the GPU loop kind of hugs around it uh, and extends up to the top radiator. Otherwise, we have the side plate for the distro. And we also have the cover, which is really quite a simple one. This has the fill ports. That one has the drain ports. And that is everything. Now it's time to start putting these cases together and essentially making them disappear. Okay, so let's move this distro to the side and build the case. Oh. Quantum X. I've got the rear piece and the top piece. And there are only two lengths of screws for the whole case. Here, I need longer ones because this is going through a thick part. And when it's going through the four mil parts, like the motherboard tray and the radiator, then I just use the short ones. And I think there's also only one place that every part can fit, so I won't do it wrong. So yeah, you can instantly see why the top part's so useful because it holds the whole case in its shape while you're building everything else. The radiator brackets could theoretically uh, have the radiator installed on them when you put them in, but you can also access every single screw on the whole build at any point um, for mounting the hardware. So I'm going to put the whole case together and I'll put the radiator onto this. I'll put this a little brace for the front, or oh, for the side radiator on. This goes up to the front. Okay, now we have that. We can put the PSU bracket inside. Next piece is the motherboard tray. That just has four screws to go in. That's that. And now we just need the graphics card bracket. We'll attach the brace from the bottom. Okay, now that's all together. It can go into the case. For now, I don't have a graphics card, so I'm going to put it at the lowest point because I'll probably get quite a big one. But you can see there's four different blazers that it can fit. So the black case is going to be exactly the same. So let's do that really fast. Okay, so there we are, both cases together. It went really easily. All the threads were nice, all the screw holes lined up. There was no problem at all. I really didn't notice any major blemishes that would be a problem. So I think both are ready to go to CES, but obviously they'll need to build first. One thing that immediately was always under question was how strong are these gonna be versus how light are they gonna be? And could they be even thinner? You know, could some triangles be removed? Could they be simplified even more, more material taken out? Well, without a build, they feel extremely rigid, really strong, stronger than you would expect, perhaps as strong as uh, a typical like steel frame case. They really don't twist much. Of course, they twist more than uh, a completely solid aluminum torsion, but they really are quite rigid. So I thought, hmm, could have made it thinner. However, they're also impossibly light. The, the whole thing, uh, all assembled like this is 1.4 kilos. So it, it, it's not like picking up a case. It's, it's lighter than some of our blocks. You know, it, uh, we have CPU blocks that are heavier than this. So uh, it's actually strange to have such an item around the EKHQ because Every GPU block is heavier than this, and this is enormous, so uh, immediately it's strange to handle. I'm sure that will be fixed when we put a complete build on it, 
and the next and the heaviest part of the build is going to be the distribution plate. You saw all of the pieces earlier, so I could show you building a whole distribution plate, but I thought I'd just ask Mitya to do it. Uh, I did tell him that he could 3D print the O-rings if he wanted to, you know, so he doesn't get all sad again. But this is actually so big, we don't have a 3D printer with a bed big enough for some of these O-rings. So we had to use O-ring cord and uh, make it all by hand. For, at least for the, for the outer ones, I think some of the small ones are printed. So, sorry, Mitya. Uh, let's put these on the kit. This is heavy. This is massively heavy compared to that. Uh, at least three times heavier. Anyway, let's put this on and hope it doesn't fall over. These are actually the wrong pump covers, but they're on there just to pressure test the distro and check that everything's okay. So I will put it on the case now, but it won't necessarily stay on the case because it's probably gonna be easiest to put the radiators on the brackets and then push this on the front afterwards. But for now, let's offer it up, see how it all looks. So there we go, both of them are together. All there is to do now is decide which color I use for which thing. And I'm sticking with what I said. The silver is nicer to look at the shapes of the case, to appreciate the detail in all of the parts when you see it without the build. And the black one, it's gonna hide a little bit more, blend in with components. It's gonna be easier for me to find a black motherboard, black power supply, black everything that this blends with and hides and fulfills the brief of not existing. Quantum X. So now we've built up all the cases, it's time to do a build. We've got, where's the case gone? Where's the case? Oh, it's here, great. Now we've found a case, we can get on with all the other hardware. We've got three P420s, two of which are going on the GPU, which is a RX 7900 XTX Red Devil, and one last P420 for the CPU. We found a 13900K CPU block. Another new surprise, so as well as the RGB pump covers, we now have a very special Velocity 2 Edge Edition. We'll see more of that when the lights come on, but that's a really cool block. Uh, we have Team Group T-Force DDDR5 RGB memory. It's very triangly and sort of suits the look of the case. Uh, we have surprisingly some very old Vario pumps because I don't want to make PWM cables try go across this case. Uh, so I can just set the speed on those and extend the power cables and hide it a little bit better. Fans, we have the 140 FPTs. They're all uh, DRGB, so I'm gonna have fun with those little cables around this build, and I think that's gonna be the hardest part of this build. Big cables, uh, we have a Silverstone PSU, so the best pinout available, they're all just gonna be straight wires, really good looking, not too many like splices or nasty things to make. And that's partly also why I tried to find uh, a Radeon so that it has eight pin PCIe connectors and not the high power ones. Motherboard is a Asus ROG Maximus Z790 Hero. Um, pretty much chose it because it's completely black and it's also ATX. And on the case, I don't wanna eat up too much of the empty space with a really wide motherboard. So a, a nice, like, true ATX motherboard will float the best, it will, you know, have the best view around it. And it's just big enough to hide the case without being like so big that you don't see the empty space. And that's pretty much it. One thing we don't have on the table is fittings and tubing because there, there are even more surprises to come. A 
confusingly, I'm gonna take off the distro now. I know that was the last thing that we put on the case, but um, I just wanna have better access when it comes to putting the radiators in. And because we don't have the fittings yet, I'm gonna push that on at the end, but it won't get in the way of putting the, the build together. Ideally, because uh, the radiators push inside, I would put the fittings on at the same time, slide it in and then screw it on, uh, but we'll just do it backwards. So five screws remove the distro plate again. Uh, so, part way through this, I just realized that my chain is going from right to left, and I want it to go from left to right, so that the fans run from the top corner of the case, all the way across the top, down the front, and then back along the bottom. I did the bottom one right, and I've done this one inadvertently, just done this one the same way around as the bottom one, but this one will need to go the other way. But, as I've just noticed, rather than just move all those wires again, I can use those from the side because they now go from the bottom to the top. So we get three more fans. That's the right way. Now I have my loose end, which is the input on the left. So when this goes up into the case, it will all be the right way around and the cables are at the back. I thought I was just about to put this bracket on the radiator and then realized I won't be able to reach these two holes at the bottom and screw them back on the case because the radiator blocks them. So I need to put this back on the case and then mount the radiator. So now all three radiators are mounted in the chassis. It wasn't without its technical problems. Uh, first I got the orientation of the fans a bit wrong. Um, just the direction of the cabling. These have the Omnilink cables and uh, males and females, I put them backwards on the top fans. Uh, my, my plan is uh, to join all nine in series and also create some little spurs for the pumps and for the RGB in the distro plate. We'll come back to that, but it's gonna be a tough part of the build because uh, these uh, FPT fans, the links between them won't be able to handle, uh, definitely not on the five volts, enough current for all of the RGBs because the pump covers each have almost 30 diodes. The um, distribution plate has a half meter strip. Every fan has nine diodes, so it's too much for the five volt rail uh, to go through the 22 gauge wire of each fan. So I'll have to basically make a wiring loom for it that follows this circuit. So the, the signal cable will run through every Omnilink device uh, and there'll be little spurs to join on the RGB for the front things. And then power will have to go in stages. So one wire to the first bank, one wire going around them to the next bank of fans and one to the last just to keep the current high enough. Uh, and then the same for five volt for the RGB. Of course, we'll all need their own power source alongside it, but I think that I can run them all from here on the top corner of the motherboard or from the power supply, because the power supply is gonna be facing up on the back, so I can run directly from this top corner. That's the easiest to access for a PWM input, for a RGB input, and for the power input. So I'll run from there across the top fans, down the side fans, and along the bottom fans, and pick up every other device along the way. Hopefully, 
The other technical problem, a much simpler one, the screws for the side radiator, um, because the bracket that's sandwiched in between, the, the piece of the case, is four millimeters thick. It was just a little bit too much for the standard 30 millimeter fan, so I had to go and find some 35 millimeter screws, and now that's nicely on there as well. So, now we need some hardware. Time to put the graphics card block together, set the uh, GPU bracket in the right place, put the motherboard tray on, uh, and get the motherboard on, and then we'll keep progressing. It looks very nice, though. It doesn't twist much, not more than a normal steel case, but that way it's a little wobble. But I think when the ports stick out and the distros pressed on them, yeah. that'll make a difference. Okay, so the graphics card was in. It took a little bit longer than normally it would to mount the graphics card block because I had some quite ambitious ideas of connecting the LED strip to the internal header of the card. Uh, because this is a red devil, I was able to go and steal some parts from a liquid devil and splice the two cables together so the vector strip is plugging into the header where the RGB would on the stock cooler or the, or the liquid devil. So I don't have any cables going out from the card, which when they would be from here, which is, you know, a very um, visible part on this build and I have no motherboard tray to hide that cable behind or anywhere really to go with it. Uh, it's nice that it's contained, it just hooks inside the back plate. Uh, when it came to putting it in the case, also some technical issues because the factory IO bracket was lost. So I've ended up getting a black one from the Radeon Special Edition, just to put it together a bit neater. Uh, one port's blocked, but it's okay. Uh, and also setting the height of the riser in the case. It, it came out that the, the card was just pointing down a little bit towards the front of the case. Possibly that the standoffs I have under the riser are a little bit short, so I packed those out with uh, a washer at each end, and now it's come perfect, so it's time to move on to the motherboard. So, I've got two RGB headers on this board. One is at the bottom and one is at the top. The top one is preferable to use for the whole build since it's a little bit easier to hide. It's not easy to hide, but it's easier. So that means I need to use the lower one, ideally for the CPU block. Um, I'll see if I can fit it under the CPU block, behind the I.O. heatsink, through the heatsink uh, for the chipset, under the heatsink for the other M2 drive, and across the PCIe slot to there, and then it will be completely hidden if it's long enough. And there we go. The entire board's together, M2 drives are inside, memory's on, CPU mounted, and the very first edge block to be mounted on a motherboard. And I did extremely well with the cable. It was a perfect length to run behind the M2. I had to take the M2 out and squeeze it behind, and then it runs under the heat sinks and nicely into the bottom slot. So that saved me some soldering. And we can put this into the build. I'll probably take out the graphics card on the entire bracket now and then uh, put that back when we are ready with the distribution plate. Okay, so one thing we don't have for this case are the standoffs. Uh, the holes in the motherboard tray are just plain drilled uh, for M3 and they have a countersunk on the back. 
And is what I was thinking is we would get an M3 threaded spacer. Uh, so with a short screw in the back, thread that on, and then a short screw in the front for the motherboard. Unfortunately, we don't have any M3 threaded spacers. The closest I found was M4, but it is the right length. So I'm going to put a long screw through and then a nut on the front on the motherboard, which will work perfectly apart from these are going to fall off. And hopefully I can get all nine screws at the same time through the motherboard without pushing any out of the back. Probably won't go great. So to save a little bit of time, I had the idea of putting masking tape behind every screw so I don't push them out a million times over. Because if one were to fall out, the, stand, the spacer would fall off the front and then I'd have to repeat. It's not like you can just put it back afterwards. So let's give that a go. Well, that really couldn't have gone any better whatsoever. Might have looked a little bit slow, but that was way faster than I expected it to be. Nothing fell off, no screws came out, no standoffs fell off. So perfect, especially when using the magnet, I could just push the nut inside every little hole uh, that the motherboard had, all went back together and now I can move on. Amazing, looks like it should, let's go. But what is next? Okay, so now I'm gonna be mounting the power supply while the graphics card is out because the vertical bracket comes here under the board. It makes it just a little bit harder to access the power supply screws. There are holes through it, but it'll be really easy for me to see in here uh, while it's out. And take your last look at the back of the motherboard because most of it's gonna get covered up by this huge 1300 watt titanium power supply. Uh, but it looks great. I wish you could still see it because it's such a perfect fit for the motherboard. The, the layering of the tray and the back plate look really cool. You can tell that's heavy <laughs> when it goes in. Okay, so that's it. Everything is now on the case pretty much. All the hardware is there. We got the power supply on the back. It was really easy to fit with the graphics card gone. And then I, of course, put the GPU back. So the Red Devil is up front and everything is looking fantastically good together. Uh, the, the triangular shapes of the case together with the Velocity 2 Edge, uh, even the memory, it, it really like the angles of the RAM follow the silhouette of the block and it, it works really nicely. I'm very happy with the color palette so far. And luckily, one thing just came in. I can't put the distro plate on yet because I still don't have any tubes. But what I do have is this box of rose gold fittings. These are the first torque rose gold fittings. I've got everything I need for the whole build. So there's lots of HDCs. Uh, this is the biggest. This is a double rotary 90. There's lots of parts to that, so that looks amazing. I've got all my 90s. I think I even have some spare, so let's get into these. So now they're all open, that's one quite large job done. They look absolutely excellent. Uh, they're a real rose gold plating with actual gold inside, but they look uh, quite coppery. They look like a really bright, perfect copper. So I hope they'll be a good fit for the otherwise very black build. Well, that's a life hack. Not a lot of people know. You should tell it. Mm -hmm. I'll never give away that secret.
Okay, so that's all the fittings that I can actually fit in the build right now. I still have a whole bunch left over, which are for the distro plate side, and there are a few spares there still. Uh, I don't know what configuration of offset fittings are needed for this particular motherboard. I think it's offset three, but I'm not certain. So I'm gonna wait until the distro plate is there and I can check with the tube that it's perfect. Otherwise, everything looks nice. I already really like the color of these fittings in the build. Hopefully, with cables, with LEDs, with coolant, it all starts to look even better. So for now. Quantum X. So unfortunately, I don't have the tube yet, so it's gonna be difficult for me to continue with finishing the build or at least putting the distro on and mounting all the fittings. So I'm gonna get ahead with one of what is probably the most difficult parts of the build, and as such, I've started to plan it on paper and in my head already, but it basically comes down to, there's so many RGB uh, devices in the build between all of the fans, the distro plate, and the two pump covers on the distro, as well as all of the fans, that if I were to connect all those things in one big series, uh, I would effectively overload the first fan because uh, the OmniLink devices are all connected in series. And if I went more than six fans, that would be a dangerous amount of current for the wire alongside the very first one. So I can only put six fans in a line I have nine fans, and I also have a 50 centimeter LED strip and two PCBs with 20 diodes on and two pumps. So I need a way to power everything, but I don't also don't want to just run wires across the empty parts of the case. I don't want to go down with them. I don't want to go across. If I can make it just one cable leaving the motherboard, that will be perfect. So my plan is to make one adapter from the motherboard. So fr from the DRGB header up here and one of the PDBM inputs, I'll make the wires from there go through the motherboard and up next to the EPS connectors. So then I can kind of hide those three wires in amongst the EPS connectors and they will go up to the first fan. At the same time, I'll take the power from behind on the power supply to the first fan and then at the top, split that in half. So half will go into these three fans, which I'll then connect to these three fans. And the other half will go around all of those and join up to the last three fans. And then I'll make a little pigtail going backwards with two more RGB connectors for the things on the distro plate. Now, if I tried to make all of that, it would be a huge amount of fabrication. So I've gone and stolen some things that will hopefully help. So I have, this is a prototype OmniLink adapter, which is made for going from PSU, two PDBM sources and one DRGB header. So I'm definitely gonna be using this DRGB header because it just has one wire. It just has a signal wire. So that's one thing I'm gonna steal from this. Then I found this, prototype splitter, which is effectively like an extra piece for your OmniLink chain. That would give you three bonus uh, old DRGB connections to old products or to water blocks or whatever you might want to add that just has a standard connector. So I'm probably going to take this little piece off there and split that into my new part. And then I've also got just a standard OmniLink extender, but the cool thing about this is all of the wires are joined together in two ribbons. So there's two ribbons of four. It's gonna look much neater than if I cut eight individual wires and tried to kind of make them behave because they would just splay apart. So I'll probably do that first because it looks easy. And then I've got a bunch of female and a bunch of male connectors. I've got some tiny heat shrink, just if I need to join wires, and some male and female crimps, which are this standard, which isn't Minifit Junior, this is Microfit 3. So uh, I've got crimps for that. 
And let's see, it's gonna be fun. Uh, I've also got to find wires and figure out the lens, so I might have to put on the distro plate and try it out. Let's start with the easy bit, because this isn't gonna be nice. So the big cable which connects all of the RGB and all of the fans is actually done and it's in the build already. So that is as much as the tiny cables as will be visible at the end, which I'm very happy with. Practically, you can just see where the signal wire goes out from the motherboard and that's gonna get hidden inside the EPS connector. Uh, everything's linked to the power supply and it pretty much works. There were some teething difficulties in the testing. Uh, RGB was just kind of randomly flashing at first, but tried a different controller that was actually on a motherboard and it worked okay. So hopefully it works on this motherboard when the build's done. And the fan speed was also a bit unpredictable, but I think I had the controller that was separate from the build because uh, I had two different grounds that there was some kind of interference with the PDBM signal. Hopefully it actually does something when it's on this motherboard. But if it doesn't, then I'm just gonna run the 12 volt line for the fans on five volts and then it'll always be quiet. And that means it's time to start the big power cables. So there's gonna be obviously a 24 pin, two eight pins and three eight pins for the GPU. So that will look like another 24 pin. And my idea, if it works visually, was to make a gradient that is very reminiscent of a soon to be popular sunset at some point in the next two years uh, with yellow, orange, pink, purple, and finally blue. So it makes a very cool gradient. And then I'll mix in some neutral color. I've not decided which yet, but I'm, I'm deciding between black, shade 19, or carbon BTI. These are all uh, MDPCX colors and all MDPCX sleeving parts and tools that I'm going to be using and that's what gets nice results. The actual layout of the cables is going to be quite simple. I'm going to attempt to keep them very tight to the motherboard so they don't kind of go up and hit the fans and they don't sprawl out into the build but I'll just make them as short and tight as they can be and hopefully it looks pretty good. So a few moments later, or in other words, two or three days, all of the power cables are now sleeved and done and in the build. So uh, it was pretty straightforward with this power supply. They're all straight wires, so enough splits to make, and I could be really, uh, really fancy with the combination of colors, and they flow nicely around into the power supply and like keep the pattern. Uh, all of the patterns match in the back and in the front, so I'm. I'm really happy there. Uh, the hardest one was the GPU cable because it actually gets longer from left to right. On, on the front side of the build, the yellow cable is on the left and on the back side, the yellow cable is on the left. So, because they uh, cross over each other, it means the inside cable is very short and the outside cable is much longer and I had to make every wire a specific length. But the 24 pin, because it goes up, and the eight pins just go over. They're all the same length, they were really fast. And after that, I did also sleeve the pumps. I put new wires on them, extended them the whole length of the build, then sleeved them, threaded it all through and inside all the other cables that are there. And I've kind of cable tied everything inside the chassis. I've also pre-installed the LEDs so they are cable tied inside and they should come out in just the right place to go inside the pump covers. If they're a bit too long, I can push it in. The pump covers are on because the wire has to go through them. So they're on already. And the next step is to mount the distro. 
Sadly, the tubes that I've been waiting for for a week still aren't here. So I've found the next closest thing visually, which is our uh, matte black brass tubing. And I'm gonna be using that for now. I hope that what I wanted to use will arrive and I can swap it at least in time for CES and maybe in time for the last part of the video. Uh, so you can see what it was like. But until then, this will look more or less from a distance exactly the same. Um, when I put the distro on, because of the order I built the case, because I was waiting for the tubes the entire time, I need to put the top two tubes in at the same time as all four push and fit things. I know it's gonna be really tough to kind of align them all because the case moves a tiny bit uh, and I need to get the two tubes lined up all at the same time. That's not gonna be easy, but hopefully it's still fast and then so much of the loop will already be done. All the radiators will be connected and we'll just have to make the four tubes that are missing. So let's get to that. Welcome back. Right now, we're gonna be taking a close look at the latest Quantum X build that was made for CES 2024. Since we're unveiling so many new products and there was lots of exciting things we were working on, most of them were incorporated into this build. So we have a lot of new things to get through. And what it all started with was the case itself. So it was inspired by a piece of marketing material where we showed all of the EK components rendered with no case and no hardware. So the radiators, the fans and everything stood suspended from a distribution plate. And that is what we tried to attempt to recreate with a real physical build. So the case was designed specifically to not be a case. Very systematically, every part was hidden, concealed, and disguised as much as possible. They were all thinned down and made incredibly light. So what we have in the end is a skeleton of a case, which from the front angles is completely obscured by all of the hardware. The distro plate on the front was made specifically for this build. It was considered we might use a standard distribution plate, but we decided if we made a new one, we could spread things out and extend the illusion of things levitating even more. So there's a nice big gap under the GPU from the radiator and again, above the motherboard. So you really have the illusion that the motherboard and the GPU sits floating in the middle of these components. The distribution plate is our first ever dual loop distribution plate. So the CPU is cooled by the top Surface P420, and the GPU is cooled by two Surface P420s, one on the bottom of the case and one on the back side. Also adorning the prototype distribution plate are two samples of our latest convection DRGB D5 cover. And these have a vivid ring of LEDs around the pump, and very conveniently, uh, the cover is located with magnets, so you can remove it, access the cabling, uh, adjust the pump speed if you have a Vario motor. And that was essential for this build and really helped keep the wiring clean. The fans being used are Loop FPT 140 DRGB fans. And this is actually the first time I think I've put together a full DRGB build in, in the history of EK, and uh, maybe ever. So uh, all of the fans are RGB, all of the blocks, all the distro plate, and linking all of that together in a case that shouldn't exist was probably the biggest challenge of the entire build. So in order to keep cables to a minimum, 
we wanted that there was only a single wire, a single signal wire leaving the motherboard and then a wiring loom for all of the 12 volt and 5 volt devices was created directly from the power supply. So there are no cables reaching to every header around the edge of the motherboard, but just one uh, hidden neatly between the EPS connectors at the top. Uh, they run past every fan in sequence, all nine of them, and also have a spur for the convection covers and the front distribution plate. Next, in the exciting world of EK prototypes, we have the Velocity 2 Edge block. This is the first time the Edge was ever used in a build, and we have the black version here for LGA 1700. That also features its own addressable RGB, and it's uh, wired directly to the motherboard, so it's in its own zone. Uh, all of the wires are kind of hidden inside the heat sinks of the motherboard, so everything stayed really clean. So that Velocity 2 edge block is cooling an i9-13900K, which is in a Asus Republic of Gamers Maximus Z790 Hero. The memory we're using in this build is from Team Group. It's T-Force RGB, uh, and we have four 16 gigabyte sticks for a total of 64 gigabytes of system memory at 6,000 megahertz. The GPU is a power color Red Devil equipped with the Quantum Red Devil block. So very much like a Liquid Devil, uh, we actually used some of the wiring that we had from a Liquid Devil GPU to adapt it that the GPU LED is connected directly to the PCB under the backplate. So the GPU is controlled by its original lighting software as if it were a Liquid Devil. And in that way, we also didn't need to trail any cables across to the GPU block. Powering all of that hardware is a Silverstone Strider 1300 watt titanium power supply that's mounted immediately behind the motherboard. That allowed us to build custom cables that wrap very tightly to the motherboard and further like consolidate the visual that the entire motherboard assembly is floating. So by keeping, keeping them tight, they don't visually connect to anything else on the case and it all just appears to be suspended and working illuminated and, and cooling pass into it. Uh, the cables for this build are all handmade with MDPCX supplies. They were made specifically to fit in these exact placements. So the orientation of the crimps, the length of each individual wire, and the assembly of each piece was specific to this build. So they're all trained, they all stay in place and hold that visual the colors used for the cables were intended to be evocative of a sunset, so they fade through from yellow, orange, pink, purple, and finally into blue and carbon. They all emanate from the center of the build, so closest to the CPU is yellow, and they fade away from there. And we also set all of the lighting effects of the build to follow that scheme uh, to be representative of the sunset. So. Lower in the case, it's orange or warmer colors, and higher in the case, we have uh, blue tones and uh, much cooler colors. The choice of coolant also reflects that decision. The lower loop for the GPU uses solid fire orange coolant, and the upper loop uses cryofuel solid electric purple coolant. And then lastly, of course, most importantly, the loop itself. It's constructed very much like every other front mounted distribution plate matrix seven loop with a few little distinctions. So to clean up the front end and to reduce the number of ports, we actually made the entire graphics card block assembly movable in the case. So you don't need three sets of ports at the front and you also don't need to use offset fittings for the GPU instead it just slides up and down in increments of seven millimeters. And in that way, there's just two holes in the distro and two tubes passing along. And it always works out exactly the same. Uh, the CPU is connected in a very similar way with two parallel tubes, except in this instance, an offset fitting was necessary because we're not using a monoblock, we're using a CPU block. So the exact position of the CPU is dependent on the specific motherboard. And in this case, we needed an offset of seven millimeters. 
So the offset fittings are placed on the distribution plate and we just have straight extender fittings on the CPU block. The radiators have very little tubing to the build actually and for the first time we use the ports in the very end of the radiators. Uh, we typically avoid doing that with standard distribution plates for cases because it prevents the use of S radiators. Uh, here, since we made everything specific for this, we're using P radiators, which do have the ports in the end, and the top and bottom radiator just pushed directly inside. The side radiator utilizes one 90 degree fitting and one double row three offset 28 millimeter and two very short tubes that connect it. So in total, this build has six tubes. They are our matte black brass tubing in 14 millimeter size. And as if we didn't have enough prototypes already in this build between the case, the CPU block, its distribution plate, the pump covers, we also have a brand new finish of fittings. So these are genuine rose gold plated torque fittings uh, and they continue the theme uh, and they also reflect a very warm light and a, a quite unique tone uh, that a nickel fitting or a satin fitting wouldn't. And they really, um, when the lighting is turned on, uh, clean up the build and bring everything together so that it makes sense. So thank you very much for checking this out. It was a privilege to have it displayed at CES and also to use so many new products. Uh, huge thanks to everyone at EKWB that allowed it to happen in time. This was a crazy project to push through in December right before Christmas, but it's there and it looks absolutely immaculate. Uh, so thank you very much to all the hardware vendors who supported this project, especially team group for the memory and Silverstone for making a power supply that was such a pleasure to sleeve. It wouldn't be finished on time if it wasn't so easy. For now, thank you very much for joining.